Another viewer question. So this question comes from Anisra. And Anis writes, Hi, love your videos. I'm just wondering, how long did you wait before watering the echeverias that you beheaded? I assume that they don't have roots yet. Thanks. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Hi, Anis. And you're right. I wait for them to develop roots first before I start watering them. But you have to take note that the rate at which they grow roots differs according to the plant and of course to some extent it depends on the season that you're in at the moment. Of course things happen a lot faster when it's their growing season and the reverse is true when they are dormant things go really really slow and I would really I would definitely advise against chopping or beheading when they are dormant. So as you know, Echeverias are dormant during winter and they actively grow during the warmer months. So for me personally, the perfect time to behead would be mid or late spring or, or late into summer. Because the middle of summer is too hot and unless you have them in the shade, they might burn. And too early into spring means that it's still a bit cold. So, you know, although they would already thrive by then, they are still just about to get out of dormancy. Things might be happening slower at that time. And if you do it too late into autumn, then it means that you're going to hit winter afterwards. And things would progress slowly from there. You just have to hit that little window between spring and autumn. That way you make the most out of the time that they have for growing. Another thing that seems to affect the, the growth rate would be the size and the, the age of the plant itself. Of course, the younger plants tend to be more vigorous with their growth, so they tend to root a lot faster. But if you're beheading an older plant, and it depends on the position where you chop it, if you chop it a bit high at the youngest part of the stem, then things would be going a lot faster than if you chop far away from the rosette and the stem is old, and that's not really recommended. For more details about that, have a look at my video about beheading. The age of the plant does play into this. I find that the, the smaller Echeverias grow a lot faster than the older ones. The smaller types like the, the Elegans or the, the Violet Queens, you know, those types, they tend to root within as early as a week or sometimes even just several days. As for the, the larger rosettes, the larger types, the larger freely carunculated types, they usually take me about at least three to four, two to three weeks, and sometimes even months. And if you don't hit the optimum, you know, the, the small window, of, the small window between spring to autumn. So it takes a bit of patience. And until then, until that happens, it's it's best if you don't water them at all. Well, they don't have roots yet, because otherwise you're just making it too humid for them, and too much moisture and not enough air will encourage fungus to grow and it would lead to rot. So what I usually do is just to dump them in one of my trays or you know in any container somewhere out dry and in the shade and as soon as I see roots I would move them into the soil put them in a pot or in the ground depends on where I plan to do it and you know ease them slowly into the sunlight and also ease them into your regular routine so you don't have to give them too much water at the start but you might want to water them more frequently than the ones that are already established the rule of thumb i guess would be to keep the soil moist but not drenched a bit more humid than usual this would be just to encourage them to grow so if you do everything right in the, in the right in the right time frame the right age and cut it the right way things will happen really fast Otherwise, things might be taking a bit slower, but don't fret and don't panic, don't overwater, just to make just make sure of that. Because I think at this point, your main your main enemy would just be fungal rot. It's, that's just something you have to watch out. And as you know, to fight against fungus, you just need to give it airflow. So you know, just keep it somewhere high or isolate it in a pot. I don't know. It's up to you. You have many you have many options, you have to explore it on your own. So thank you again for that question and I'll see you in the next video.